Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I am joined by Ryan Rampersad so that we can share with you our experiences with the Nexus player. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO26. So Ryan. Hi, Ian. This is a device that we both actually have, which yeah. is nice. Uh, cause, cause very rare these days. Yeah, I know. Especially since you're like kind of leaving the pure Google, uh, universe and going off into that Samsung one. I, I, to be honest, I just buy all the phones. Oh, that's true. Right. That's very true. Um, but the Nexus player is not a phone. This no. one, this one is a, uh, a set top box. Oh, I thought the Nexus player was an MP3 player. <laughs> that would be wild, man. If they came out with one of those. Yeah. Well, that, that ship has sailed. Yeah. Yeah. These days, if you want like. I don't know a touchscreen MP3 player. You just buy a cheap like Moto phone and then mm-hmm. and then don't put a SIM card in it, kind of thing. Yep, yep. Um, so so Nexus Player. It's a set top box. You plug it into your TV and to make it into a smart TV, basically. Pretty much, and it has a it has a user interface of its own. Yep, yep. Um, Running Go- or Android TV. Yeah, it, which is um, I think the current version is seven. I think. Yeah, I, th- I think that the numbering system on Android TV it, is concurrent around. with the um, uh, the the version on the phones. And then um, at Google I/O this year, we actually saw an updated UI, which has not been rolled out yet. No surprise. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I so, think I think Nvidia has been like showing the UI running on their Shield mm-hmm. uh, TV. Yeah, that's one of those other projects that products that have you know that kind of UI, that Android mm-hmm. TV UI. Mm-hmm. So. Let's just describe the UI for everybody who's never seen it before. Yeah. It's a bunch of, like... Rectangles. Re- rectangles, like... So, on my TV, on my Nexus player, I have, like, apps. Mm-hmm. And then, I think, above it, I have, like, suggested media. Yeah, yeah. So, when when you're on the home screen, the very first row is a bunch of, like, things that, that it thinks you're going to be interested in. So it, Never interested in them. Yeah, the, um... The one exception is uh, when it suggested to me that I play the song Beep Beep by Brian Mitchell. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I, of course, took a picture of that and sent it to Brian. That's good. <laughs> Hi, Brian. Um, but yeah, it, it pulls it pulls those suggestions from, like, all of the different apps that you have on it. So, you know, that, like all three. <laughs> yeah. So that one was obviously from Google Play Music. Um, it'll pull stuff from, like, YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, I, have, I have seen a few things suggested on there that I'm like, oh, yeah, I might be interested in that. Impressive. Um, but most of the things, like, if it tries to show me movies from Google Play Movies, I'm like, nah. No. Um, I don't think that Netflix ever has suggestions up there. No, it does not. I guess they didn't build that in. Why bother? Yeah. Yeah. So um, can we also talk about how we acquired these devices in the unusual circumstance on how we bought them? Um, yeah, I... I bought mine because I saw you tweeting suddenly that they were $25, and so then I hopped on a bus to get on the green line to come over to the Midway Target because that was the only Target that had them in stock. Yep, that's right. So I don't know for whatever reason, but I was in um, West St. Paul at the time, Mm -hmm. and I went to the West St. Paul Super Target, I guess. Yeah, so we were both like well out of our usual neighborhoods. (laughs) And and it's like, gotta find them, gotta find them. (laughs) I actually I called ahead oh, to make sure like which location had it before I left the house. That's very good, very good idea. So yeah, we bought these for twenty five dollars, which is um, as you might know, ten dollars cheaper than even the Chromecast pricing. Yep, yep. Um, and that's seventy five dollars cheaper than the Nexus Player usually was. Right. Yep. So that's normally a hundred dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Which is yep, that's what it was. I don't know if for a hundred dollars I would have purchased one. No, no, I would not. Mm-mm. So uh, twenty five is a great deal. Yeah, yeah, I'd say, especially since it has Google Cast built in. Right. So in theory, it can do everything that the Chromecast can do. Right. Um, there's a there's a couple of weird little exceptions to that that I'll I'll make note of later on. Um, but yeah, it it's kind of this combo thing where like it has Google Cast, so you can control the device from your phone. You mm-hmm. know. Um, but it also has this interface that you can interact with on the screen using the remote that comes with it. I love that remote. Yeah, I do. I do too. Um, it's like I, I like the way that it's it's convex, you know, but like kind of rounded on yeah. the bottom, you know. Um, so um, I, uh, I I use this in my room, my bedroom, uh-huh. and so you know I have you know it's cold down here in winter, for example, right? Um, 
I don't want to have to take my hands out of my nice warm blanket and <laughs> use my phone to pick yeah. a new video. I can just use the remote under the blanket because mm-hmm. it doesn't need line of sight because I guess it's Bluetooth. Ryan, this is sounding really, really <laughs> intimate. I'm just saying it's so nice to not have to expose myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord! Um, yeah, yeah, having it Bluetooth and not be an IR blaster. Yeah, perfect, perfect. I also think that the remote is a good addition to this device because it's good for like old people. Right? Am I an old person? You Ian? may be an old. Well, you've already told me that you don't understand Snapchat, so I think you are an old person. I think that qualifies you. Yeah, I don't yeah. understand Snapchat. So, so yeah, it's a lot of people who aren't invested, you know, surrounded by this like mobile first world mm-hmm. aren't going to have like. That's that's not the first place they'd look to go and like put thing up, something up on the TV, right? Sure. Um, it feels very natural to me to to you know queue up like several YouTube videos mm-hmm. in a row um, to cast them to the television. Um, but like if if you if you're used to using a remote with a television mm-hmm. to interact with an interface up there, then having the remote still is is a good thing. Um, I mean, I personally think that we should kind of transcend past that but you know i i think my um my particular use case is Mm -hmm. a clear indicator that we cannot transcend that okay like being able to use the remote in the dark because it has like six buttons on it maybe yeah it's got the four directions it's got the uh microphone and it's got the microphone and that's it oh it's got the back button and the home button yeah okay so seven buttons yeah maybe so you can use it in the dark you can use it Mm -hmm. without seeing it you can use it Without line of sight, it's perfect. You can't necessarily do all of that with a phone. You know what else that uh, remote is good for? It's like so perfectly balanced to just be like a fidget. You know? Oh like, sure, yeah. You kind of yeah. twiddle it yeah. in your fingers. You flip it over I do and that over and over all again. The time. Um, it's it's almost the same balance as like a typical you know five inch phone or so. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a really. Uh, um, so have you ever had to change the batteries in yours? No, I have not. I have not either, and I think I've had it for over a year now, mm-hmm. at least. And I use that daily. I don't know what I'm going to do when that happens because I don't know where any double A's are in my house. I assume it takes double A's. Or maybe triple A's. It's kind of small. I have no idea. Actually. I don't know. We can go yeah. look later. Um, yeah. So I, uh, I love the remote. Uh, let's talk about the actual hardware of the device, though. Yeah. I think it's a really good look. It's the the small. It's not super small, but it's you know kind of hockey puck shaped. Yeah. Um, it's just a black circle. It's black circle. Yep. Mm-hmm. Goes super well with the tv stand that we have at my house which is you know black wood very Mm -hmm. like modern minimalist um and so you can't you can't even see the hockey puck when it's sitting on there one of the things i like about it is that if for example you wanted to just hide it somewhere you Mm -hmm. could because you know like in the in the back of your i don't know entertainment center or Mm -hmm. whatever the case might be because you don't need line of sight right. and you never will interact interact with it ever again. Yeah, you don't um, have to put physical media in it. No, so it's um, it's not like, you know, a console and it's not You're not like, going to have a problem with like hotboxing it in there, you no, know, because I don't think so. it, it it doesn't even have its own fans, you no. know. It I, passively cools. I don't think I don't think it does enough work to actually get hot. Either. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do we know like what resolution it caps out at? By the no, way, it, I I'm sure it can't go above 1080. I'm ge- I'm guessing it's 1080. It's ancient. Yeah. Um, we both just have 1080p screens, yeah. right? Yeah. So we have, we, we did not test no. uh, past that. Which is fine. I think I don't, I don't need more than that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, for the most part, no. Um, I like that you can install apps and games from Google play or just directly from APKs. I did dig around in the settings and I found the toggle saying like, allow, yeah. uh, um, installs from any, any source. Um, I of course have not done that. Because there are barely any apps for the TV version of Android. Yeah, yeah. There's, I think Google's goal was to be like, wow, App gaming Store. gaming on Android. Didn't it's going to be didn't awesome. did they have like a controller there for There was it? a controller that you could buy for it, yep. Um, I did not see the point in buying a controller for that device. Um, as we can see now in, in uh, you know, hindsight by looking at the history of this device, there was no point. Yeah. 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 Um, I like... Uh, I like that idea. Um, so Crunchyroll is in a, is kind of like Netflix for anime. Okay. And, uh, so they they have a phone app and you can Chromecast to the TV. It's great. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you want to install, for example, to use the remote on the TV, the Android TV app of Crunchyroll. Right. You can, and then you can run it 
and then it will promptly crash forever, no Oops. matter how many times I report it. Yeah. Yeah. So there are a lot of apps there that are just abandoned. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody has added a new app to the TV store in a very months. long time. And it's the annoying thing to me as well is that a lot of those apps have like the, it's a different listing in the Google Play Store mm-hmm. than their regular one. So like when I'm scrolling through my all my all apps list on my phone, I see like Netflix not <laughs> installed and I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. It is. And then I tap on it and it's like, "This is the Netflix for Android TV." And I'm like, "Oh, yeah. okay." Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they they uh the Google hasn't really talked about this much. They did mention, you know, new UI update at IO, but mm-hmm. I don't really know who it's for. Nobody's going to really notice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's um it's unfortunate that they I mean they stopped manufacturing this in like May of 2016 or so and uh that that's the only Android TV device that Google has directly made. Yeah. Uh at this point Nvidia is the only one who I can think of who's like, you know, still holding the banner and like trying to charge forward with this thing which is a shame because i think it has a lot of capability Mm -hmm. um you know with the recommendations with the remote capable Mm -hmm. ui i think that's great um and then with the android 8 tv whatever it's called yeah um they will have a picture in picture mode you know i thought the picture in picture was coming to android tv like a year and a it, half ago. Probably, but you know how Google is. This sure. is like feature, nah, we'll move it. We still don't have uh, night shift mode on, on our Android phones uh, yet. Can't have features. <laughs> Too good for you. Uh, yeah, and I, th- I feel like Android TV as a platform is something that really shines when you when, when you give it some good hardware to work mm-hmm. with, right? So that's why I think the NVIDIA TV, or the Shield TV from NVIDIA, uh, is a, is a, a good a good play yeah. right because it it has the power to actually run some decent games nvidia of course has their own store on top of it that actually has some real games mm-hmm. um that you can play like ports of pc games um you know it can it can run as a as a whole plex server you can you know um plug in like a bunch of other storage into it you know um which i i don't think is really a thing that most other uh set top boxes do no probably right? not Although I guess I kind of question these days, like how often does that even come up? Yeah, it's 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 a rather niche thing, but yeah. like who does niche better than Nvidia, right? <laughs> I, I guess you know, yeah. So I think overall, what I would say about um, so so ha- what was your experience with casting? Casting is pr- pretty good on this. Um, when I I really appreciate the the feature that I appreciate the most is that. When you start casting something to the Nexus player, it supports, I forget what the protocol is called, it's like CEC or something like that, mm-hmm. where it can command it the, the TV, TV to turn on and switch the input from yeah. whatever it is to the Nexus player itself. I love that feature also. Yeah. So, so I just hit the home button a bunch of times, I guess, on the phone or on the remote. Oh, yeah? And it wakes it up. Okay. It Wonderful. Does, that does the same thing? Nice. Oh, so good. Um, I will mention that Chromecast also can do that. Okay, good. But... Yep. Uh, it feels so much better when the remote does it. I was actually going to say the opposite because I like with with that feature, I don't have to reach for any remotes, right? I don't have to reach for the Nexus Player's remote, and I don't have to reach for the TV's remote. Yeah, but I can just use my phone. I can do it in the dark. <laughs> I mean, phones make their own light, Ryan. You can do that in the too dark, bright. So. <laughs> Just need to turn it down a bit. You even have an OLED screen on your phone. It's like too it's, bright. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I also really I appreciate the like slideshow that they have mm-hmm. uh, that they use as a screensaver um, that kind of can you know if, if we're sitting around the the living room just hanging out but not watching anything on the screen that kind of gives a nice like backdrop then mm-hmm. you know we don't have, just have this big black rectangle there right um, sometimes somebody sees something on the screen that's like oh that's interesting usually you know like photography from NASA mm-hmm. right <laughs> yeah and we all go ooh ah ooh so, uh, tell me what you didn't like. I did not like that, well, for one thing, this being an older device, right, um, from Google means that there's a few things that it's lagging behind on, right? It doesn't, it's not as well supported in, like, 
Google's many services as a Chromecast is. Mm -hmm. Um, so for example, you get these like really weird, wonky little examples. Like, um, when I got the, the Google Home and I heard that like, um, Netflix was going to be supported on the Google Home. So you could just talk to it, tell it to cast a, you know, something from Netflix Mm -hmm. onto the TV. When that feature rolled out, I was like so excited. I tried it and it was like, there's a problem. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And like, I tried it two weeks later. There's a problem. Turns out it's because I have a Nexus player instead of a Chromecast. It would work if I was doing a Chromecast, which I think is absurd. That is absurd. On the other hand, that brings us to the problem with uh, the Nexus player's implementation of what they call Google Cast. Mm -hmm. It's not good. It's not? No. In what ways is it different from uh, Chromecast? So number one, you can't name the bloody thing. Ah. So, let's say you have a house full of living room, bedroom, um, dining room, kitchen, Nexus, or Google Chromecast devices of some sort. Yeah. And maybe you have a Google Home somewhere, too. Mm-hmm. So, you've got all these things, and they're named according to the room. Yeah. And then you'll have a random Nexus player. Yeah. Great. And if you get two Nexus players, then what, what do you do? Yeah. You, yeah, you, yeah. Don't, you don't do anything. You cannot change it. I've looked everywhere. I, I think maybe the only way to change it would be to like hook into it with ADB and change some configuration <laughs> setting deep in the netherworld. Mm-hmm. Um, not going to do that. No. Uh, and it's, and it's insane that a Google engineer did not like wake up one morning and say, hmm, wait maybe, a minute. Maybe we should let them name it just like every other capable device. Hmm. Um, some uh, other than that, there are also some weird things too. So, when you Chromecast something to it, um, you know, sometimes it will just magically disappear. Like, uh, hmm. the, the, like the device will disappear. Yeah. When or? you try to Chromecast to it, it's uh, just, nope, not here it's right not now. It's not on the list anymore. Nope, not on the list. And hmm. so then what do you do? You can restart it. Right. And that only takes forever. Yeah. So it's, it's somewhat half baked there. I, yeah, I did notice that it was like disappearing a few times and I was wondering, like, is it, is it asleep? Is it like, what, what happened to it? And so I, I think I went all the way to like resetting it to factory settings and logging myself in and stuff. That's tough. Again. Yeah. I don't know why I put myself through that setup process again because the setup process is not the greatest. No. Um, no, it's not. As we've seen with like the hardware devices that they came out with this last year, you know, the Google Home, mm-hmm. like the, uh, um, much, much better. Yeah. The, the, all of the Chromecast even the, and everything. Even the Chromecast setup is pretty good. You connect to the local Wi Fi and it figures out who you are, it steals your credentials. Well, you, even before, it connects to the local Wi-Fi. You, it makes like an ad hoc network between yeah. your phone and the the Chromecast. Right. Yeah, and then logs in. Um, but yeah, the Nexus player, you're stuck with like this remote, like going left and right, up and down on a QWERTY keyboard that's up there on the TV screen, and you got to type in your whole darn Wi-Fi password and then your whole darn Google password. So and... it, it's 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 a clearly a play for something that has passed in the industry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So sad. Um, how did you find the voice recognition on the remote? Did it work very well? I don't well think for you? I've ever used it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I it it was not as good at recognizing what I was saying as most other like Google services. So what I've would used. you ask it to do? Um, I would. You know, that's a very good question actually, because usually when I'm talking to something in my living room, I just talk to the Google Home. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but I think I tried out a couple of times, like just searching, f- like like to fill the search field in you know the netflix app or Mm -hmm. in the youtube app or whatever the name of something that i was looking for and just like the words that i was saying were not matching up with the words that were appearing on the screen it's fine mm. yeah but then i otherwise i have to type on that thing Ah, typing um speaking of netflix um I think that this is probably mostly Netflix's fault that they made this app and then, like, didn't really uh, do anything with it afterwards. Um, but a lot of times if I, if I started Chromecasting a Netflix show from my phone, it would then, like, open up the app on the Nexus player and it would go, who's watching this? And I would have to reach for the oh remote and gosh. choose which uh, which profile I wanted it to be watching on. Like, wow. this defeats the entire purpose <sighs> of casting from my phone. And, it, and it's so weird because that means there's clearly an integration between the you know Google Cast protocol and the apps that are installed on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know who dropped the ball, but... It's so weird. It's, it's so weird. All of uh, Google, Netflix, everybody dropped the ball on mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Um, also, of course, uh, not all streaming platforms are supported, you know, so Amazon video is the big one that's not on there. Um, and that's, that's the reason that 
I still believe that like the best thing to have plugged into your television is not one of these set top boxes because if you if you want to be guaranteed that every single platform that you're ever going to want is is available, you're just going to need a Windows computer. Yep. Just plug in a Windows computer, guys. Yep, that's right. Go build yourself a nice cheap one and and it will play videos for you. You also have to buy a wireless mouse and keyboard. Yes, right. Um and those those aren't terribly expensive. No, but, you know. I have recommendations if you are interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so I guess I guess that's my my big takeaway from this is it wasn't a terrible buy for $25. Um I think it was a great buy. I use it every night and I have used it every day since I bought it. Yeah. Um my plan for it is uh I'm probably at some point going to bum it off on my parents once they have a real tv that actually has an hdmi port and can actually like you know i've got several things coming to them i've got a blu-ray player that i'm not using you know that they can have i've got the nexus player etc cetera, etc cetera. um <laughs> and and so i'm going to give that to them and then i'm just going to buy myself a regular chromecast so that i can um live in the world of supported google things yeah it's it's really too bad so do you think google will ever release another one of these improbable um it certainly won't be named the nexus player maybe the pixel player oh, that makes so much sense pp <laughs> <laughs> well google google will cast flail i guess yeah yeah mm-hmm. so i think i would totally buy another one if they had it if it was priced well mm-hmm. so i don't know if i need it if, it if it's not really any better than it is now for a hundred dollars again there's no point no um you know if it's like 60 maybe yeah like i love the remote like it's like getting two two uh chromecasts almost mm-hmm. like one over there and one in my hand it's great all that i need yeah my, i think my ideal tv setup at this point is a, a windows pc plugged in for like most of the stuff because that's where everything is going to work yeah and then just a chromecast so that i can just for the convenience of like i'm just gonna throw it up there from my phone mm-hmm. i can i i'm gonna queue multiple different you know youtube videos by the way i'm really surprised that youtube still doesn't let us like create a queue when you're just watching something on on the website you know like oh, on your windows computer the the youtube is so weird about how the queue system works so on the phone it works these days sort of okay sort of yeah but it's it's still kind of weird because you have to like click the little dots to get into the you know add to queue uh-huh. but it only works oh, it only okay. works for me if i'm chromecasting something already right yeah 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 and it's, Ex- exactly it, and you can't do it when you're not chromecasting and then if you leave that chromecasting session queue's gone yeah mm-hmm. uh, and then although the- i have successfully reconnected to a chromecast session and and seeing the queue there that's so still. funny it's a little bit hit or miss yeah but yeah and then the the next player youtube no idea what a queue is not even a little bit uh, what no the the nexus player youtube has no queuing support because you can oh, only oh have when one you're thing. when you're using the remote right and okay yeah. yeah but when you're chromecasting to the nexus player you do have queuing yes yeah now presumably <laughs> it's so weird presumably in um you know the next version of android tv that youtube app can have picture in picture which you won't mm. get unless you have YouTube Red, but then you might be able to actually, you know, like browse around YouTube and make a queue. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Let's not get too hopeful. Yeah. I mean, because the YouTube app on the phones already has this like picture-in-picture picture, as long as you don't leave mm-hmm. the app, you know. Um, but I don't think you can add stuff to the queue from that. I don't think so. I think you're just browsing around and then you, like tapping on something. I don't, changes I don't understand. Video. Yeah. 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 Google. <laughs> Typical. Yeah, I th- I think we went uh, a little away from just talking about the Nexus player there. At the That's end. fine. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, those are that. Those are our experiences with the uh, now. Uh, the, I, what do I call it? The late Nexus player, since it's uh, it's dead. It's dead. <laughs> it's passed. Yeah, I mean ours are still alive, but you can't you can't really buy one anymore. No. Uh, so thanks for listening, everybody. This has been. A postmortem from Second Opinion, our reviews show here on the Nexus. If you have any feedback for this episode, uh, please email the Nexus TV at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at the Nexus TV. Uh, I have been Ian Arbuck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian Arbuck. And of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on uh, Twitter at Randomar and of course on RandomRamperside.com. Yep, and remember, if you have any ideas for other things that we can review, or if you want to come on the show to review something for us, um, let us know about that as well. Have a good one. Bye.